Hello everyone and welcome back to our Action RPG series. In this episode, we're going to be working on adding the other ability keys to our character so that we can use one, two, three, four, and five ability slots on our spellbook. So let's take a look at how that works and put it into our game. Okay, so last time we were here, we made our slash ability that will reach and use from our bar. And what I want to do is I want to make it so now we can use the other keys to do different abilities. Uh, at that moment, we just got it on primary attack. So let's fix that. So primary attack is the only one that's different uh, because it is our main button for interaction with everything. But with everything else, you can use simple inputs. It's not anything special with these ones. So let's take a look at how we can accomplish that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my input folder, actions, and here I'm going to set up the inputs for the other keys. So I'm going to do IA action bar one. Okay, so that'd be the first slot on the action bar. And we'll duplicate that. And it should renumber them for you as you go. Put another at the end of it. So I need four of them. And we also need another one for the right click. Okay, so there's my five extra sets there. So let's go go back to our context to assign these things. Because whenever you make a new input, actually, you do need to add it to your mappings. So let's add it here. This is one really annoying thing that I hate <laughs> with Unreal uh, 5 is that when you minimize these and you make a new mapping, it opens them up again. It's really annoying. Um, but anyway, so this one, we're going to do action bar one. See what I mean? It's really annoying. And we're going to do the one key. And we're going to do another one. Two. Another one. Three. So if you just hit it on these little buttons here, they allow you to do a shortcut. Uh, new mapping. Four. So I click on that little button and tap any key on my keyboard and it will auto assign it. And a right click we need. Right click. Okay. And that's our right mouse button. Uh, and that's all we have to do on these. We don't have to worry about anything else from here. Um, we'll leave them all alone. Okay, so now to actually implement these actions. So let's go over to our player character and start adding these things into this. So what I'm going to do, I want to make a different graph to how we'll keep things a bit more organized. I'm going to do this one as combat graph. And I can actually put my, my primary attack event that I have already made. I can bring that into my combat graph. Okay, primary attack is now there. And so now we just do the other attacks. Now, as I said, these ones are a lot simpler because they're just doing IA action bar one. And there you go. So in here, we're going to do, uh, we'll just set up one. And then this is basically the same for all the others. We're going to do basically what's going on here. Okay, so we're looking for what spawn abilities we have. Is valid. Targets. All that stuff. Yep. Keep going around here. Spawn another actor. And, and so on. Yeah. Now, what we can actually do is rather than use the same code over and over and over and over again, we can actually make this a function, make life a little bit easier for us. So if I were to create this into a function and select all these things here, right click and go to collapse the function, we can now do cast ability. Now, on cast ability, I do want to add a single new input for this. Um, oh, well, what's the item name that's going into it? Oh, that's the target. Okay. So we'll rename that to be the target, into the target. And we also want another input, and that's going to be the slot index that we're using. So slot index. So the slot index will now be plugged into everywhere we've got zero set in here because zero we, we said we're going to be our left click buttons so that's our default click so we're going to do slot index 
and I'm just going to copy and paste that in other places. Um, to the target, uh, we don't worry about that. Uh, there, don't worry about this zero here. It's just the ability ones you need. Um, targets. Uh, leave that one at zero as well. And spawn abilities. We want this one here to be our slot index. So we're keeping track of the various different abilities that we're trying to send over. So this is going to be fire off the ability in the first slot. Okay, zero slot. If I go out to my combat graph and put in my IA action bar, I can copy this and put that in here. Now, I need to get a target. Now, it's easy enough with the primary attack because I'm sending it over when I click on an actor. But in this case, we're not. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to get the actor that our mouse is hovering over or the nearest one to it. So what I'm going to do is make a new function and do get target. And this, we're going to do get hit result. Uh, no, nope, not get hit result. Get player controller first. There we go. And then we do hit result under cursor by channel. And I'm going to take out my hit result and break that open. And what I'm going to do is rather than rely on what I've clicked on, the actor wires, because I want to take into the nearest one. If I just take the location and work out the nearest one to that location, it will be a lot easier and I'd have to do like if it's on this then do this way if I fix on something else do this way it's just basically all in location so on location we can do nearest actor and now we want to get the actors to check so let me just minimize that so it doesn't look so ugly and the actors to check is going to come from our get target we can do get all actors of class with the target dummy. Uh, no, what do I call it? Enemy. No, what do I call it? Dummy, just dummy. Okay, and that'd be like your parent class of all your enemies. Go into there. Now, if you're doing a very big level and you've got lots of enemies in it, you don't want to. You don't want to obviously do this for all enemies. You want to do it just for those in range. So what we're going to do on our viewport is add a sphere ra uh, radius around them to work out whether or not they are in range, essentially. So I'm going to go add and do a sphere collision, and we'll do um, targeting ring. I'm going to set the sphere radius to be quite large. I want it to cover most of the screen. So I'm going to set it to a thousand. All right, that should do. <clears throat> and on my get target, rather than using get all actors of class, I'm going to do a target ring, get overlapping actors, and then choose the dummy actor there. So this is obviously a lot better because we're only getting those that are in, within a certain radius of us. Um, but again, if your level is short, small enough, you can just use this if you like. Um, but for now, that'll do. So that will give us our nearest target. I'm going to do return node. Plug that into there. And this will be set to nearest target. And because we're only using this as a getter, um, we're only getting information, we're not actually setting it or changing it, we can make this a pure function, make our lives a lot easier. So now if I go back to cast, uh, not cast ability, combat graph here, I can drag in my get target and plug in the intended target there. And the slot index will be one because the action bar one is set to the first one, so one. And what that's going to do is it's going to go into our spellbook component, look at the ability array that we have, and it will look at index one and do whatever ability we've assigned to it. So if I go and change this from none to my slash, for example, and let's see if that works. So as you can see, it's now assigned it to the bottom just fine. And if I hit one, we've got the slash going. I can still left click to do my spinning sword attack.
obviously in Diablo, you probably would have these other way around. Obviously, you have full customization of that. We'll do the customization of your bar in another part. But let's just quickly add in the other buttons to handle more abilities. So let's go into our character again. And I'm just going to do action bar two. And this will be the same, just uh, we do it on not triggered, we do it on started. There we go. And that'll be starting next too. You can kind of guess the pattern here. IA action bar three. And action bar four. Oh. There we are. And paste one in. Started four. And we've got the right click as well. So right click. IA right click. And we're going to do that again. But this one would be five. So the ability is all determined by our spellbook. So if we go to a spellbook here, I've got index zero as sword slash ability, index one as ability slash. If I want to swap these around, I can either close them through the menu here or I can just drag them around to move them around here. So now they'll be switched around. We've got the swipe and we've got the slash on the left click. See, the cooldown still works as intended. So there you go. We've now got our ability set up to enable for one, two, three, four, right click and left click. In the next part, we're going to go through and set up a debuff system. So we're going to talk about how that works along with buffs. It's the same thing. And we're going to talk about how they work with each other, how they work with stacking debuffs, and talk about how we attach it and do something like a ticking damage over time. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can find all my videos early before everyone else from just $1 a month. Thank you so much to everyone who is supporting the channel over there and everyone supporting the channel on YouTube members. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.